Amen. Thank you so much. I, I, uh, I'm almost afraid to get up here and talk after all that. That's good stuff. I'm, uh, are you enjoying the worship team? Are you appreciating what they're doing for us and everything? I, uh, I want them to, to just know how much we love them and how much we appreciate them and the effort that they're putting into to the music and things, and, and I'm going to tell you, I, uh, I don't know about you, but I really and truly believe uh, they're, they're covering the gamut of music and song, and, and uh, I, just, uh, I just appreciate them so very much for what, what they're doing. Appreciate you. Appreciate you taking the time to be able to come out today and be with us this morning. Uh, after all the storms, all the rain and everything, I got three and four tenths inches in my rain gauge uh, last night, so so I'm thankful for the rain. I'm sure my ponds. I didn't really get a chance to look at my ponds, but I think they got a little water in them, and the cows and the horses have got grass to eat. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, Michelle and I got the opportunity uh, to go Friday night down to what they call the Brumley Singing at the Maybe Center in Tulsa, and we got to hear a lot of good music and a lot of people and things. And I heard this little deal. I'm going to share it with you this morning. An old, an old man and a young boy, his grandson, they were walking and they were leading their mule whose name was Heine. And as they were walking along, the, the man came across a, another man who was, who was walking and, and he, uh, he looked at the, at the uh, old man, the grandpa and the, and the grandson, and he said, well, it sure is a shame that you got a mule and you won't ride that old mule. Well, the old man, the guy went by him. Grandpa looked at the grandson, and he said, well, he said, uh, grandson, I'll put you up on the mule. So he puts grandson up on the mule. They continue to walk, and next thing you know, they pass by a lady. And a lady looks at him and says, boy, isn't it a shame that that young boy is riding that mule and that old man is having to lead that mule. Well, the lady went by, and so the grandpa took the young boy off of the mule, and he climbed up on the mule, and the young boy was leading the mule. And it wasn't too long that they ran by another guy, and, and this guy said, man, he said, isn't it a shame? Look at that young boy making that old man, uh, you know, make <laughs> I'm getting confused. Where was I? The young boys walking. Thank you, Troy. That's, that's that college education kicking in right there. I appreciate that. <laughs> so they complained about that. Well, the next thing you know, they're continuing to walk along. The, 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 the grandpa looks at the son. He says, you know what? He says, why don't we just carry this mule? No. So they, yeah, that's it. They, they pick the, they, <laughs> so they pick the mule up, and they come to this bridge, and this bridge has some low sides on it, and and, and, and the young boy stumbles, and the next thing you know, that mule goes over the side of that bridge, down into the river, and that mule gets washed away. They don't see the mule anymore. Well, there's a moral to this story, and the moral to the story is, <laughs> if you try to please everybody, you just might lose your hiding. That's it. That's it. That's it. All except for the part that Troy had to straighten me out on. That was it right there. <laughs> Michelle's trying to figure out if I told it right or not. This morning, I want to talk to us. We, we've been talking about a lot of different things. We've been talking about, we, we started, we kind of started a series. We talked about sin and the, the effect of sin in your life and, and things. We've gone along that. Then what we've done is we We've kind of ran through some other things. Jared preached a really good message on holiness. Uh, last week we, we, we talked about grace and, and what grace is. But one of the things that I want us to do uh, maybe this morning is to, just for a, a few minutes here to try to concentrate on, on what it means to be able to, to, to have God in our life that we might be able to live out what we've been talking about. And this morning, I, I want us to go to a very familiar verse. If you have a Bible and you want to turn in your Bible, go ahead and turn in your Bible. We've got it up on the screen right here. 
Uh, it's Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Now, one of the, I just want us to take that. I want us to stop right there. I want us to look at that real quick. Paul's writing, and he's trying to encourage, and what he's trying to say is, he says, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I, I want us for um, just a minute here to look and to think about what that really and truly means. I, I think so many times what happens is we as people, what we do is we sometimes forget that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life, that he comes to live inside of us. And we need to remember and to understand that now we are not walking in and of our own strength. We are walking in the strength of Christ. The strength of Christ lives inside of us. And he's, he's active and he's wanting to, to, to direct and he's wanting to guide. So we need to remember and to understand that we want to walk in the strength of his might. Uh, Paul says to be strong. He says to be strong in the Lord. So if we are strong in the Lord, what we're, what we're doing is we're pointing toward the Lord. We're looking to the Lord. We're wanting the Lord to, to, guide, to guide and direct us in our life. And it's, then he says, and in the strength of his might. Brothers and sisters, that tells me and what it's saying to us is that we can walk in the strength of Christ. We don't have to walk in this world all by ourselves. We don't have to walk according to our own self. We don't have to just... <clears throat> Excuse me, to rely upon just ourselves. We can rely upon the strength of the Lord to guide and direct us in our life. Then Paul begins to go on and he begins to, to use an analogy here. And what he begins to do is he begins to take a soldier and what a soldier would use as, as weapons to go into battle. And he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Brothers and sisters, we're not fighting a physical war. I hope we know and we understand. I know I've said this before. I want us to, to, to grasp hold of this. The spiritual controls the physical. The physical does not control the spiritual. Who we are on the inside is who's going to come out of us on the outside. Who's in control on the inside is going to be evident on the outside of us because where, where we are thinking, what we are thinking, what we're believing, it, are, are, those things are going to be the things that are going to come out in us. And, and what we need to remember and to understand is that we're fighting this spiritual war. Everything is really and truly, if we stop and think about this, it is spiritually driven now even people who there will be people who will not recognize this they will not try to understand it they'll say I'm, a, I'm my own master I'm in control of my own life I do my own thing but brothers and sisters we're we're following one of two masters whether we want to believe it or not There's all kinds of thinking out there. There's all kinds of th things. But Jesus told us, he says, you're either going to serve me or you're going to serve the devil. You're either going to live for me or you're going to live for Satan. People will look at that sometimes, and I know maybe even some of us are going, well, I don't know, but brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, where that is concerned, there is no gray area. There is no if, and, or but in that. We're going to serve one or the other. One or the other is going to have control of our life. And when Paul's writing about this, this is what he's talking about. This is what he's speaking of. And what he's saying, he's saying that, that, we would, that we can stand against the devil's schemes. Because let me, let me just tell you, and I know we know this. I know we've said it before. But just because you became a Christian doesn't mean Satan's given up on you. Just because you've given your life to the, to the Lord doesn't mean that he's, he's just going to lay down and, and, and let you go by and say, okay, chalk that one off. No, he's always constantly looking for something. 
He's always constantly looking for an area or a thought or something that we can get our mind off of Christ so that he can derail us. Brothers and sisters, here's Paul is beginning to, he's going to start to present something to us to help us to understand that we have the ability to be able to fight in this spiritual warfare. What we're about to read, really and truly, we look at it and we say, well, these are physical things that Paul is speaking of, but Paul really and truly is using it in such a way that he's saying that what we can do is we can spiritually use these things. They really and truly become characteristics of who we are supposed to be as followers of Christ. So as we read these things, listen to what he says. He, looks, he, he begins, he says this. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Having done all, to stand firm. These things, these characteristics, if we take these things, we put them into our life, we apply them to our life, allow them to be evident in our life, it helps us to stand firm against Satan's schemes. He continues, he says, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as, as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness of Uh, given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Brothers and sisters, when we go back and we look and we see what... uh, what uh, Paul's writing and what he says, he says, we have this armor that we can put on. We can have these characteristics that God, of God, that he wants to put in our life, that we might be able to have this. But one of the first things that he says is we've got to have a belt of truth. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we, we need to remember and to understand is that we're supposed to be a truthful people. Now, automatically, when we think of that, one of the very first things we say, well, I shouldn't lie. Right? I mean, that's, a, that's something that just right off, the, right off the bat, I mean, one of the Ten Commandments is don't lie, right? But really and truly, if we stop and we think about this, this talks about all of life, not just a piece of life or just a part of life. We are to be true in our character. We're to be true to God. We're to be true to each other. Our truth should be so to the point, to the place, to where when we say we're going to do something, we do it. One of those areas that we look at and we say, and one of the things that we do an awful lot, and, and, and not to just, just kind of just nonchalantly put this out there, but, but to, and not trying to accuse anyone or anything like that, but to, to just look and to say, well, if somebody tells you something other than you say, well, I'll pray for you. Then the question is, really, did you pray for them? Specifically. If you look at someone and you say, well, I'm going to pray with you about that situation. Did we really and truly pray for them about that situation? You see, if we're really and truly going to take on truth, the truth is going to be our, a part of who we are. If we're going to be live in truth, then truth has got to be all of us in us and, and all about us. We've got to be able to take that. We've got to be able to use that, and it needs to be what it is. Our yes needs to be yes, and our no needs to be no. How many times do you think maybe someone gets left hanging if they're thinking, well, they're praying for me, and we fail to pray for them? You see, if we're going to be truthful, if we're going to live in truth, truth has got to be who we are in every aspect of our life. Not just what comes out of our mouth. It's got to be a part of our character as to who we really are. He goes on and he says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So many times I, 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 I run into people and they talk about, well, this righteousness stuff and this holiness stuff and all these things, I, I'm just not real sure about. I'm no, I don't know if I'm comfortable with it. I, I, I know who I am. I know 
uh, the kind of person I am and things stuff. I'm just not real comfortable with that. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the Bible is plain. The Bible is clear. It tells us that we can live in righteousness. We can live in holiness before God. But you've got to have these characteristics. These are things that's got to be put into our life. These are things that we have to put into practice in our life in order for it to be real, in order for it to be true. When we put these things in, true, in practice, when we put these things in our life, these are the things that help us to be able to live like God wants us to live, to be a righteous people. I'm, I, I guess what really and truly one of the things that kind of frustrates me a little bit about this is that so many times people will try their best to dismiss that. Well, I can't. I'm just human. I'm just a man or I'm just a woman. I can't do that. But what we need to go back to is we need to go right back to where we started. We are not living in our strength. We are living in his strength. Not just what we can do. It is what Christ can do in us. So yes, we can be a righteous people. We can live in righteousness. Verse 15, he says, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace... How many of you have found that the gospel is peaceful? How many of you have really and truly noticed in your life, have you, have, you, have you really and truly grabbed hold of it and to know that the true peace of Christ in your life? One of the things about, about giving our life to Jesus, one of the things that we, we can, that we can know about giving our life to Jesus, remember what it says in Romans, Paul wrote, he said, Now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. To live a life where we're not running around feeling condemned all the time. One of the things that Satan wants to do is he wants to keep us under condemnation. He wants us in a place where we are constantly re reminded of past sins. He wants us to, to, to be reminded of the fact that we're just people, that we're just men, that you can't. He, he's full of the I can'ts. Did your parents ever grow up and tell you there's no such word in, in this household as I can't? Did mom and dad ever tell you that? I don't, I don't like hearing that. Don't tell me you can't. You get out there and work on it until you can. You get out there and you do it until you can, right? The, the same thing is to be given. When, when, the, when we get the gospel of peace inside of our life, it allows us to be able to know and to understand Jesus loves us. Jesus died on a cross for us. And the whole reason why he died on the cross is not just so that our sins could be forgiven, but that we could live a righteous life before him. We can live in peace with Christ. We can be peaceful about who we are. We can rest assured to who we belong to. We can rest assured that he's never going to leave us, that he's always going to be there for us, and he will never, ever forsake us. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't know about you, but have you ever worried about what this, that, or the other, this one leaving you, that one leaving, this, all that sort of thing stuff? Jesus says, I'll be with you to the end of the age. And brothers and sisters, that ought to bring peace to us. This gospel message that we believe in, this good news that we believe in, is a, is a message of peace. Jesus said, I don't bring to you the kind of peace that the world offers. I bring to you my peace. What kind of peace do you think Jesus is living under? What kind of peace do you think he brings with him when he comes to live in us? His peace. True peace. He says in all circumstances. Okay, here we go. Hadn't done this in a while. What does all mean? Everything, right? Doesn't leave anything out. Okay, in all circumstances. So circumstances, whatever, what kind of circumstance? Money? Relationship, all of it, right? In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Remain faithful. 
stay faithful. I mean, if we really and truly try to maybe think about it, has there ever really been a time where, my, where I've questioned my faith? Have I ever looked at it and said, do I, I mean, am I positive about all this that I'm talking about? All this stuff that's being shared, all this thing that you hear preachers talk about, all the stuff that we sing about? When you go back and you think about Paul's life and you see the kind of life that Paul lived and what he done and the things that happened in Paul's life, if anybody could kick the can and say, you know what, forget it, I don't like this stuff, I've been beat one too many times, I ain't taking another beating. And we're talking about being beat, we're talking about being beat with rods. Uh, they've thrown rocks at me for the last time. I'm tired of having to be let down beside the wall, you know, to get away from somebody wanting to kill me. I've been shipwrecked, uh, concerned with drowning. I, I've, I've, st I've went to go pick up wood for a fire and reached down and a serpent bite me. I'm done. Is that what Paul said? Paul continued. Paul worked. And what, he, went all the way, he went all the way to when they cut his head off, he was still praising God. He was still telling, I can see Paul with the guys, the executioners, carrying him outside and, t and fixing to cut his head off. And I can almost see Paul going, hey guys, you know what? You're fixing to cut my head off, but you know where I'm going? I'm going to heaven. To be absent, with, to be absent here is to be with the Lord, right? To be, to be away from this body is to be with the Lord. He's, he's, I'm sure he was telling those guys, you know what? It's okay. I'm on my way to heaven. Paul remained faithful. And so we are to remain faithful in all circumstances. When we get the news that, that our health is not well, when, when, when we get the news that someone has passed away, when we get the news that, that different things have happened and stuff, that one of the things that Paul says, remain faithful because God's going to be there. He's going to be there with us. One of the things about it is if we just remember, it did, God didn't ever say, Jesus never did, ever, never did say that, that things wouldn't happen to us. He just said he'd go with us. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego still went in the fire. Right? He went with them. Right? So when we think of those things, when we remember those things, as, as, as difficult as those circumstances can be, as, as hard as those things can be, one of the things that we know and one of the assurances that we have is that he will never ever leave us so we need to have faith we need to keep our faith and then we need to take on the helmet of salvation brothers and sisters to, to be for, for salvation to be able to know who we are we started the year off with this who are we go back to let's see if you remember who are we children of God we are his children. If Christ lives in us, if he is alive and well inside of us, we are his children. That means that we have his salvation. We have the forgiveness of our sins. We have the ability to be able to call out to him. We have the ability to be able to draw from him, from him living inside of us through the Holy Spirit, that we can draw from that and that we can live our lives as Christians. To live our lives as people that, that God would look at us and say, that's my boy. That's my daughter. How many of you have gone to the ball games and Brant used, to, Brant used to step up to the plate? Now, when Brant was a little guy, let me just tell you this story real quick. Brant was a little guy. This was Brant. He'd, he'd walk up to the fence, and I'd be sitting in the stands, and he's only about this tall, you know. And he'd look at me, and he'd go. I said, all right, son, you can do it. Get in there. Step in there and hit that ball. So he'd get in there, and, man, he, he'd get there. We worked with his stance and everything. I mean, he had a pretty stance and everything, stuff like that. And that old pitcher, that old pitcher would wind up. And just as quick as they, he released that ball, Brant went. <laughs> strike one. He'd step in there. Out he'd go again. Strike two. Strike three. 
Son, you got to stand in there and you got to hit that ball. You got to stand in there and hit that ball. Now, after he got older and he figured a few things out and the light came on, this was Brent. He'd walk up to that plate and he'd go, that pitcher would throw that ball and man, he'd go, pow. And he'd trot around the bases. That's my boy. That's my son. Son, stand in there. You can do this. Son, it's okay. Step in. Watch the ball. You can hit the ball. I promise. If you'll stay in, if you watch the ball, you'll hit the ball. And one day, the light comes on. He steps in. And not only does he hit the ball, the ball goes over the fence. That's my boy. That's my son. Brothers and sisters, uh, that's God. That's God. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. You can do this. Step in. Stay in. Don't bail out. Don't walk, don't walk away. Pow. Home run. That's my child. That's my child. And we are to pray at all times. Paul reminded us and told us in another passage, he says... Pray all of the time. Pray without ceasing. I think so many times, and, and it's good that we do this. We do need to do this. And, and, and not, trying, not trying to discourage and, and certainly not trying to, to tell us to back away from this any at all. We need our time with the Lord. We need to be able to, to have our time with the Lord that we can break the Word out, that we can look at the Word, that we don't just read the Word, but that we digest the Word, that we allow the Word to really and truly work in us. We need to have those times and things. But brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, we can be in an attitude of prayer no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. In anything that we're doing, we can, we can be in an attitude of prayer. We're, God's, God doesn't hang the phone up just because we said amen. He, he, is, he is constantly available to us. And He wants us to know and to understand that when we pray and we talk with Him, that, that there's this, just this open line of communication That he will hear us no matter what, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, he will hear us. He will talk with us. He'll be there for us. Pray without ceasing. And brothers and sisters, just remember, God is interested in everything, not just a few things. God is interested in that the quick of your finger hurts. You say, now come on, Pastor. That's kind of trivial. No, it's not. If your child hurts, what do you do? You hurt. Right? He's interested. He wants us to know how to come conversation this morning, just a real quick conversation about God, uh, you know, about the beginning and all the things that took place and all the things that happened and stuff and, and how that, that, you know, how God knew that certain things were going to happen and take place. And if he knew these things were going to happen and take place, then, then, then how, come it, 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 how come he allowed it to go ahead and happen the way that it has? Uh, one of the things that I, I firmly believe, I believe God created us and gave us a free will that we can choose to have a relationship with Him. That's far different than something, somebody being in a place where it's almost robotic where you say they will have a relationship. We get to have a choice. We get to say, yes, I want this Jesus in my life. I want Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. 
I'm, I want to accept Him as Lord and Savior in my life. I want to live for Him. I think that's why things happen the way that they have. Now, I know somebody might disagree with that. But for my finite mind, I can, I can just look at that and I can just say that, that, that God allowed things. He loved me enough to, to allow me to come to this place and to come to this point of what he has accomplished for me. And I can choose to live for him. And what an honor it is. What a privilege it is that we can live for Jesus. Finally, one last thing. Paul says this. He kind of takes something and kind of puts himself in this, but he says, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. You see, brothers and sisters, Paul is, is very much aware of the fact that we get to be a part of this. We get to play a part in all of this and that what we can do is we can open up our mouths and we can speak boldly. For Christ. <clears throat> if we have all of these things, if we take on these characteristics, if we have truth, if we have faith, <clears throat> if we take on all of these things and we uh, uh, apply them to our life and allow them to be active and real and true in our life, then what we can do is we can go away from here boldly proclaiming the gospel message in the way that we live our life. Remember the old saying. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. And be a testimony for Christ. And if necessary, use words. One of the things that we recognize and understand about cowboys <clears throat> Most cowboys are cowboys because you look at them and they, they're dressed like a cowboy, right? Boots, spurs, chaps, right? Horse. If you're Tom, you can throw a rope pretty good. If you're Wendell, you catch a lot of air. But there's no mistaking that they're a cowboy because you can tell, right? I mean... The real cowboys. I'm not talking about the drugstore cowboy. I'm talking about the real cowboys. Right? I mean, they just got this. Why can you tell that they're a cowboy? The way they dress, their mannerisms, the way they act, the things that they do. The truck that they drive, the horse that they have in the trailer. the Right? There's no mistake that they're a cowboy. There should be no mistake that we are a Christian. We should put on Christ to the point to when people look at us, they will say, there goes a Christian. Amen? Not only do we have these things that, that, we, that are just things that you know, we look at and we say they're physical, but these are things that are real, these are things that are true, and these are real true characteristics that we can put into our life, apply in our life, that we can live as children of God. Brothers and sisters, today that's my encouragement for you. Go out of here knowing who you belong to, and going out here knowing that even though Satan comes against you, You're prepared for battle. You're ready for battle. Now here's the thing about that. Christ has got to be Lord and Savior of your life. Otherwise, it won't work. You have to have Jesus in your life. You have to have Jesus in your heart. You have to have asked him to forgive you of your sins. You have to have repented of your sins. You have to have asked him to lead you and guide you and direct you in your life to come and live inside of 
you need that. You have to have that in order for this to be able to be real, true, and alive in your life. If you haven't done that, and you want this, a simple prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sin. And Lord, today I want to tell you that I want to repent of my sin. And Lord, I want to ask you to come live inside of me that I might be able to live for you the way you want me to live. Guide me and direct me so that I may. You pray that prayer in sincerity and mean it from the bottom of your heart. And the Bible says, you will be saved. No ifs, no ands, no buts. You will be saved. Amen. Go away. <laughs> Yeah, just you know, if you you know when when parents after the kids get grown and everything stuff, they look at the kids and said, "Why don't you go away? Don't go away mad. Just go away. It's time to go home, right? Go away from here boldly. Go away from here knowing that you are a child of God, and go away from here knowing that you are prepared for battle. Amen. Join me in prayer.